Little by little, SpaceX is getting closer to conducting the maiden orbital flight with its Starship and Super Heavy prototype. Elon Musk's space company has already conducted a number of static fire tests in 2022 to get Starship ready for the approximately 90-minute mission. It's unclear when exactly Starship might make its first attempt to reach orbit, but when it finally happens, this launch won't be a dull affair, I assure you. If successful, we would see the spacecraft splash down off the coast of Hawaii, with the Super Heavy Booster returning to Starbase caught by the launch tower. That's right, catching a rocket. Which, incidentally, might be the most extreme and hardcore game of catch we'll ever witness. Obviously, it's not an easy thing to come about. Yeah, there's a lot of ways for this to fail. How quickly, like, is it gonna close, like, almost at the last second? Like, or will it be mostly closed and there's a small tolerance there and it skirts the whole thing by, uh, you know. In other words, SpaceX is risking it all with its launch tower for the first Starship launch. But how exactly is that a risk? Well, let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The original plan for the fully stacked Starship system, as articulated in a SpaceX application filed to the Federal Communications Commission in May of 2021, stated that both stages of the rocket would end up in the ocean. The booster would splash down in the Gulf of Mexico some 20 miles or 32 kilometers from shore, while the upper stage, after completing a partial orbit of Earth, would come down off the northwest coast of Kauai, Hawaii. That scenario is still very much possible, but a small tweak to the FCC application suggests a different outcome for the booster stage. According to the updated launch profile, upon launching from Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas, the Super Heavy booster will separate from the upper stage and then perform a partial return and land in the Gulf of Mexico or return to Starbase and be caught by the launch tower. This has accidentally increased the risk of SpaceX's giant mechanized launch tower, nicknamed Megazilla. The launch tower and its three mobile arms will play a crucial role in all aspects of orbital Starship launches. The first arm swings out to brace Super Heavy for Starship installation and connect the upper stage to power, propellant supplies, and other launch pad utilities. A more exotic pair of arms arms, nicknamed chopsticks, has a more complex job. On top of using the chopsticks to lift, stack, and demate starships and super heavy boosters in almost any weather and wind conditions, SpaceX wants to use the arms as an incredibly complex and precarious rocket recovery system. For a booster or starship catch, the rocket will approach the tower, enter the gap between the splayed arms, hover in place while the arms close around it, and eventually come to rest on hard points that appear to offer about as much surface area as a coffee table. So in theory, the, the booster is going to come back and then uh, the when the engines start up, it'll translate over, slow down and translate over and get in between the arms. Arms need to close. Not, and, and when they close, they, they, they need to close in such a way that they don't crush the rocket as well. But based on a simulation of the process shown by Elon Musk himself, calling it a catch is a misnomer, as the arms will mainly move in one dimension, open or close, and can't actually grab the rocket in any real sense. As built and shown here, they are closer to a tiny fixed landing platform capable of minor last second positional adjustments. Eventually, the chopsticks could could shave a small amount of time off of post-recovery processing, removing the need for a crane or the same arms to attach to a landed booster or ship. They could also shave off the dry mass required for landing legs, though all interplanetary ships will still need legs. However, they will also inherently make proving their own efficacy a nightmare. By all appearances, the current recovery mechanisms on the arms and the landing hardpoints on ships and boosters mean that a catch could fail if either stage is more than a foot or two from a perfect bullseye, or rotated a few degrees in the wrong direction. With the method SpaceX has devised, even the tiniest error could easily end with a massive pressurized partially fueled rocket destroying the chopsticks and plummeting a few hundred feet to the ground, guaranteeing an explosion that could damage surrounding infrastructure or start fires that might. In the event of larger anomalies during a landing attempt, Starship or Super Heavy could accidentally impact the launch tower, 
damaging or even outright destroying the skyscraper-sized structure. Ultimately, the immense risk posed by any catch attempt means that unless SpaceX has miraculously gotten the design of everything involved nearly perfect on its first try, the company will have to be extraordinarily cautious and expend a large number of ships and boosters to avoid rendering its only Starship launch tower unusable. Of course, as the saying goes, high risk, high reward. The launch tower is one of the most ambitious features of the Starship project. If Musk wants to build a city on Mars by 2050, he might come to depend on that rapid turnaround time. Back in 2019, he estimated that the city would require around 1 million tons of cargo to reach self-sufficient status. If each ship carries 100 tons, that means SpaceX will need to make 10,000 flights over the next 30 years, or around 333 per year. In March of 2020, Musk said that he wanted Starship to be able to fly three times per day. If the tower can catch the rocket and move it back into position onto the launch pad, that could help SpaceX reuse rockets faster than ever, which is a unique idea. But if you didn't notice already, there are some contradictions in Musk's statements. If Super Heavy is accurate enough to land on a few square meters of steel, it must inherently be accurate enough to land within the far larger breadth of those arms. The only process landing on the arms would clearly remove is reattaching the arms to a landed booster or ship, which it's impossible to imagine would save more than a handful of minutes or maybe an hour of work. SpaceX's Falcon Booster's turnaround record is currently 21 days and 6 hours, so it's even harder to imagine why SpaceX would be worrying about cutting minutes or a few hours off of the turnaround and reuse of a rocket that has never even performed a full static fire test, let alone attempted an orbital class launch, re-entry, or landing. To put it simply, while Starbase's launch tower arms will undoubtedly be useful for quickly lifting and stacking Super Heavy and Starship, it's looking more and more likely that using those arms as a landing platform will at best be an inferior alternative to basic Falcon-style landings. More importantly, even if everything works perfectly, the arms actually cooperate with boosters to catch them, and it's possible for Super Heavy to avoid hovering and use a more efficient suicide burn. The apparent best-case outcome of all that effort is marginally faster reuse and perhaps a 5% increase in payload to orbit. In the end, only time will tell if such a radical change proves to be worth such marginal benefits. And that's all the time we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.